Coming up on NCC News, a huge landslide hits the town outside Seattle. We'll look into some reasons why students don't join clubs and how the real estate market looks to be on the rise. Stay tuned for these stories and more. In our top story, a landslide in Washington causes massive property damage and forces evacuations. The massive landslide has reshaped a Seattle area neighborhood as it destroyed one home and prompts the evacuation of 34 others. James Lynch surveys the damage. Uh, kind of like a nightmare, literally. Brett Holmes says the nightmare began around 4 in the morning with what he thought was a sonic boom. It sounded like an earthquake and I heard something really loud and I looked out the master bedroom and noticed that about 20 tall trees were gone. His view is no longer obscured, but he also lost 75 feet of property and the erosion continues towards his house. That was pretty scary. I got out there with a flashlight and then just kept hearing rumbling and watching more and more of it fall away. He's not alone. Behind several homes, the massive slide tore away grass and earth and tossed trees like toothpicks all along this ridge. I thought maybe the portion of it was always eroding, but that much of it, no, no. I mean, I lost 50, over 50% 50 of my yard. Neighbors rushed to the rescue, helping to pack up and carry anything they could grab. And I just picked and choose what I wanted to take. I uh, don't know if I can come back. Below this ridge, the slide took out a home and a road, cutting off some neighbors who had to be rescued by boats and ATVs. The local fire chief says they're still not sure what caused such a major slide, but crews have begun testing the soil. They're doing a geotechnical assessment of the of the slide area to determine whether or not it's it's likely that the slide will grow or whether it will tend to stabilize. Brett Holmes says it certainly doesn't feel stable around his home. He's not sure he'll return. And if not, he'll miss the place that's been in his family for three generations. Yeah, the first house built here and be a shame to see it go. An unlikely hero stops an attack of a pit bull and a little girl. The little girl is now recovering from her injuries and is showing everyone just how strong she's in the process. Honey is only small, but this little dog has outsized courage that may have saved a life. Little dogs, they think they're big dogs, eh? A chihuahua that could take on a pit bull ten times its size and protect a vulnerable eight-year-old girl. That girl, Jenna DeRoche, is now recovering, but it was close. This is the spot right here. This was where there was a puddle of blood there was. It all started on Tuesday when Jenna was picking up golf balls near her neighbor's house. The pit bull burst through this enclosure and sunk its teeth into Jenna's head. We heard Honey yelling because Honey was like he was being attacked. Her grandparents came running. When I got to her, I basically screamed and she said, it's okay, it's okay. And we just started screaming and then she realized, whoa, I can't scream because I'm going to scare Jenna, right? But Honey got there first. The Chihuahua barked and the pit bull let go, going after Honey. That gave the pit bull's owner enough time to collar the dog and get Jenna to safety. I'm just glad, you know, the Honey distracted that dog because, you know, if he went for her throat, it would have been the end of her, eh? Jenna got away with punctures to her head, hundreds of stitches on a gash through her forehead and a ripped eyelid. But doctors say she will be able to see. It's not clear yet whether she will need more surgery. But what has really impressed the family is this courageous girl is actually comforting them. She never shed a tear, that little girl. You know, she was so strong through it all. This eight-year-old is comforting you. Yes, I know. She's pretty terrific. She's the most courageous thing I've ever seen. The Italian Supreme Court is ordering a retrial for American exchange student Amanda Knox and her former Italian boyfriend for the murder of Meredith Kircher as new evidence was obtained. Ben Gwedeman has a story. 
The Italian Supreme Court has ruled that Amanda Knox and her former Italian boyfriend, Raffaele Solecito, must stand for a retrial. This came after lengthy deliberations on Monday in which the prosecution argued that the broad body of evidence collected by the investigators was enough to bring them back to retrial. They argued that the defense focused on the botched investigation by the police, but that did not mean they said that these two are innocent. Now, according to the judges, they have 60 days to submit the reasoning for their ruling. The defense and the prosecution then has 45 days to put forward their cases. A trial is not expected. A retrial is not expected until sometime early next year. I'm Ben Wiedemann, reporting from Rome. It's been three years since Coleman Bragney was in uniform. He was convicted of negligent homicide and served one month in jail. But now he is back doing what he loves as he is the new police chief of the small town Sulphur Springs. It's been three years since Coleman Duke Brackney has put on a uniform. Brackney is the police chief of his hometown, Sulphur Springs. I told the guys the day that I left I would be back. And I told them it may take me a little, a little while because it was going to be a long fight, but I'm back. Brackney was convicted of misdemeanor negligent homicide in the shooting death of James Ahern after a high-speed pursuit. Brackney was fired from the Bella Vista Police Department and served a month in jail. A state board then ruled he could serve again in Arkansas as a police officer. Everybody can judge everybody else um, until you've actually either rode with a police officer or have a family member or a friend that is a police officer. You don't know really what the job entails. Bragney says his passion is law enforcement, so he knew one day he would be able to put back on his uniform. You put the uniform back on, you look at yourself in the mirror, and you think, I'm back. You know, it's a good feeling. That's a good feeling. Brackney is the only police officer in the town. He says he hopes to hire more officers. Obviously, they haven't had a police presence here, a strong police presence anyways, in several months. And hopefully now that I'm here, people will start seeing me and coming, you know, talking to me and begin voicing their concerns and their complaints. A snowstorm forces students to spend the night in school as buses had no choice but to turn back because the roads were not safe. Students and parents didn't mind, though, as they realized there was no other choice. Here's a story from Colorado. It was a school-wide slumber party at Miami Yoder School. It was a lot of fun. It was way more fun than any of us expected it to be. Eighth grader Charlene Madden and other girls slept in a classroom. Elementary school students in the preschool room. Middle school and high school boys spent the night on wrestling mats in the cafeteria. We were hoping to get them out in time before the, the full brunt of the storm had hit. Unfortunately, it was a fast moving storm and we did not predict it, its intensity to be what it was. Whiteout conditions on the roads forced school buses on northern routes to turn back. Really couldn't see anything at all. It was really scary and we almost hit a bus actually because we couldn't see it until we got really close up to it. Mm -hmm. It was very scary. And then when we turned back we were actually kind of grateful because it was scary driving home. Parents and grandparents say those buses did the right thing. Where I live at right on Highway 94 I knew it would have been a lost cause because we couldn't even see Highway 94 from the front door. We were thankful that the school was there and took care of the kids and fed them and gave them somewhere safe. We knew they weren't going to go anywhere and we knew where they'd be first thing in the morning. This has been an unusual winter for all of us. People have been taking advantage of the extended ski season and are still skiing. Unal Eugene Sutman has the story from Hillside, New York. This is Unali Sutman reporting in Hillside, New York. I wanted to check out how the ski slopes are today. This has been an unusual winter with a lot of snow, and the ski season is usually almost over by now. But surprisingly, this weekend in Hillside, New York, there was plenty of snow and lots of skiers. It was really great actually, it was awesome. We weren't sure what to expect because it's like late March, springtime, so we thought maybe the conditions wouldn't be great, but they made a lot of snow here at Catamount and um, the slopes were awesome and skiing was really great. The mountain is still planning to be open until the end of March. This is Unali Sutman, NCC News. Car repairs can be expensive and as a college student, you might not always have the money to fix your car. 
but with some simple checkups, you can avoid bringing your car to the shop. Lorena Rusnick shows you how. Cars are part of our everyday commute, so it's very important to keep them in their top shape without breaking our banks. The following tips and how tips will help you check the important parts of your car on your own. Okay, so the first tip we're going to show you guys is checking tire pressure. Every vehicle is going to have on the driver's side an emblem that uh, indicates the tire pressure for the front and rear wheels. On this vehicle we have it right here. And uh, from that you can see that there's a table which states for the front and the rear tires. Okay, so once you have your pressure tester, you will want to put it on, on the nozzle right here. And uh, well, that will give you a reading of your pr tire pressure. The tire pressure is too high, this results in harsher ride and an ability to stop quickly. If the tire pressure is too low, the tires will wear out prematurely and have the potential to overheat. Okay, so the next step is going to be checking your air filter. Every car, regardless of the engine type, diesel or gas, is going to have an air filter. On this engine, we have it right here. It's, uh, it's going to be in the plastic housing. And what you're going to do here is just take the housing off the cover off and inside is going to be um, depending on the, which type of uh, filter you have going to be an air filter and what you want to do is check if it's um, tarnished or uh, maybe has leaks in it and uh, stuff inside of it and uh, once you, if you want if you decide to replace your filter make sure once you put it in that the seal all around the, the air box is uh, doesn't have any air leaks so like ensure that not, none of the dust particles or anything else gets inside the engine so the next step would be checking your L, uh, oil level and you do that by um, a dipstick so you take the dipstick out get a rag and you want to it's going to have a reading of maximum and minimum level you want to take it and wipe it Okay, and we're gonna place it back in. And take it out again. And as you can see here, we have a minimum level right here and this is the maximum. And you can see by the oil markings that it's right in between, which is exactly how you want it. Now, if you do end up having a lower level of oil, what you're going to do is uh, add the oil through this cap, just unscrew it, and you know, go to the procedure and check the oil level again. And if you have too much, you can always uh, go underneath the car, the car and there's going to be an oil plug and drain a little bit. Happy driving, I'm Elena Rasnak, NCC News. Coming up next, NCC students voice their opinion on gun control. Stay tuned after these messages. Gun control has been a hot topic across the nation for the past few months. And now NCC students would like to join the debate. Uno Sudman gives us the story. Connecticut is the third state following Colorado and New York to pass sweeping new gun legislation after the December school shooting and we'll have the toughest gun control laws in the nation. I wanted to ask NCC students how they feel about this. I mean, I personally haven't read the legislation word for words. I don't know what new restrictions are going to be in place because of these gun laws, but my main concern as a citizen would be whether or not these laws actually keep guns out of the hands of criminals and the mentally ill or if they're just going to restrict law-abiding citizens from the ability to protect themselves. So that's my main concern. I think that's ridiculous. I think that anybody should be able to own a gun. Um, it's in our constitution, it's in our laws, we have the right to bear arms. I think it gets a bit sensitive when you talk about something so close to home as Sandy Hook shootings um, because it really affected Connecticut as a state. But to make stricter gun laws, I mean, we had prohibition and we got rid of alcohol and the amount of people bootlegging and I don't know what they're called, speakeasies or whatever, the hidden bars. If you're going to make guns illegal or you're going to make them stricter, people are going to get guns either way, whether you want them to or not. 
this this state should be as protected as as much as possible. Um, to be quite honest, there in in the state of Connecticut, from my personal belief should have no guns. Uh, well, I think that it's obviously a great thing to have stricter gun laws, but I don't think that's really gonna eliminate the actual problem because guns will still be like there. I think that in order to actually like avoid any other shootings, guns should just be eliminated, period. You know, stricter gun laws, that's great, but people will still own guns. So it's like, if you really want to just avoid all of that, there should just be no guns, like period. Um, I feel like, you know, if somebody else is going to have a gun, you know, Rob is going to have a gun, so I got to have a gun to blast back. So, um, yeah, I really think that that's a good idea. Um, this is as long as you don't walk around on the street with them, you know, that's, that's for police right there. But, you know, if you got one in your car and your home, you know, protecting your family, your kids and all that, I mean, guns is good. It should definitely be more strict on them, especially with the school shootings. This is Renali Sutman, NTC News. On the corner, students are going to need some extra help. Luckily, NCC's tutoring center is open to all students with flexible hours. Elena Rusnick takes us inside the tutoring center. The NCC tutoring center is located on West Campus, room 110. The NCC tutoring center is a comfortable academic environment. Here, every student may come to receive help and support in their classes. Students are guided to think logically and work out problems so that their understanding of the material is strengthened and study is made interesting. Before coming to the tutoring center, students must bring ID number or banner, textbooks and syllabus, class notes and handouts, homework and previous assignments, pencils, calculator, and other materials needed for tutoring. One of the tutors, Victor Romick, who has been tutoring math for a year and a half, talks about his experience at the NCC Tutoring Center. This difficult task of this job is to find t enough time to actually uh, go around the entire classroom and actually help his, all people and all their questions. One of the NCC students, Gary Sanchez, comes twice a week for help at the tutoring center and encourages students to work in groups rather than by themselves. I would recommend that if anyone cannot make it to the tutoring center to make friends in the class, if not friends, just get their numbers, make study groups, uh, work on it in, in groups. It, it'll help you not only here in your classes, but in later on, like for your institutions, when you need to try to understand, it's not a competition. You just you all need to get a good grade. You all want to get a good grade. So I would recommend, if not tutoring center, get a good study group. He also shares that the tutoring center helped him tremendously in getting a higher grade in his classes. The tutoring center has been very helpful. I mean, I've gotten a lot of help from uh, a tutor here, and just it's helped me tremendously. I've just recently started coming to the tutoring center, and I've I've noticed the difference then compared to me studying by myself. The tutoring center schedule is Monday through Thursday, 9.30 a.m. to 9 p.m., Fridays, 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m., and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. No appointment is needed. I'm Elena Rasna against the seniors. There are around 50 clubs at NCC, but it seems like there aren't a lot of students who are joining these clubs. Jody's Despirito takes a look inside the reasons why students are not joining the There are around 50 clubs in Norwalk Community College, but are students really joining clubs? Let's find out. No, not at all. Well, I don't, I'm not too familiar with any clubs, but I mean, if I was asked about a club, I would. Could scheduling be one of the issues why many students don't join clubs? There are students that have strong opinions toward that. Yeah, well, I feel a lot of students, um, they just don't join clubs because they don't have time. You know, they have jobs and, you know, have other things, you know, children and family life and whatnot. So um, I feel like maybe if they make their schedule a little bit more flexible. I don't see a lot of advertisements for clubs. I mean, I, I walk around the school and um, I mean, I see the flyers. That's nice and all, but like, I really don't see anything. Like, they have those teleprompters, they have LCD screens out there, and it's really not. There's not really anything on it. It's like, you know, things for children and whatnot. So I mean, I really would like to see some more advertisement. Seems like scheduling and poor advertisement are the two main issues for clubs here at NCC. Changes need to be made to accommodate the students. For NCC News, I'm Joe Despirito. Coming up next, we take a look inside the real estate market in Fairfield. 
Stay tuned for more messages after this. Now we get to know our director a little bit. Uno Sudman shows us how he loves sports and hopes to find a career in that field someday. Steven Gagliardo is from Norwell, Connecticut. He's an NCC student majoring in communication arts and TV production. He likes making documentaries and movies. He also likes to play baseball. When I'm not doing TV projects or uh, schoolwork, I like to play baseball. Um, one of my baseball teams when I was 15 went to the World Series actually in uh, Virginia. It was a really fun time, it was a cool experience. While he was in high school, baseball became a very important part of his life. In high school, baseball helped a lot because playing for a team forces you to get better grades and kind of try harder in class. So what I did was kind of just crack down and make sure my grades are good. And um, my best grades were when I was in the spring when I was playing baseball. So that kind of helped me a lot. Even though Steven doesn't play baseball anymore, hopefully he will work with sports people in the future. But now that I'm not playing baseball anymore, um, I hope to look for a job in some kind of sports news or sports reporting. Anything with sports really, maybe baseball, who knows, like get to cover like the Yankees or something local like that in New York. Uh, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> this is Yid Sutman, NCC News. For the past few years, the real estate market has been in the gutter. But now for the first time since the recession hit, the market looks to be rising. Stephen Gagliardo shows us what's changing in Fairfield County. For the first time since the nation's recession started in 2007, the housing market is surging again after years of historic declines, and it looks like it will continue to climb through 2013, with interest rates and the number of homes for sale at its lowest level since before the recession. Competition among buyers has led to 10 straight months of price increases. Also with recently approved plans comes a lot of excitement for Fairfield County. Our sales space is continuing to climb. In 2008, average market time was 277 days. Now, here we are 2013, and market time for an average home is 55 days. And that's from the day we list it to the day we get an offer on it. We also have many other factors contributing. The unemployment rate has declined, the economic forecast is better, and the banks are more liberal in their lending. But there are still some legal factors that are not yet resolved that are holding back the market. There are many houses in the Fairfield County that are foreclosed and abandoned and are technically not owned by anybody at the moment. There are some factors that are still going to affect the market in the long term. And that is, there's many properties that are have uh, legal pending litigation against them. The foreclosure process has started, homeowners have abandoned the homes, and they are just sitting stagnant. One example of a home that was foreclosure started three years ago. The house has been empty for over two years. It is still in uh, a pending status, so it has not come to market, it is not being occupied, and it is not owned by the bank just yet. There is a big project going on in South Norwalk that is going to bring a lot of new buyers from out of town. The complex has just broken ground a few months ago and is going to have everything from condos to restaurants and big name retailers with over 75,000 square feet of new office space. South Avenue has two major projects going on right now which is going to bring a major change to that area of Norwalk. One is called Waypoint, the other one is called 95-7. Both of these projects have broken ground and have all their approvals and are just waiting for the developers to uh, finish their projects. It will bring retail, it will bring housing, hotel, conference center, theaters and restaurants. So with the housing market on the rise and with the new projects that are being built in Norwalk, Fairfield County has a lot to look forward to in the future. Control has been a huge debate as, just, as it should be. Obama has proposed a stricter way to buy guns. And with Congress's answers coming soon, here's a look at both sides of the debate. In the coming weeks, members of Congress will vote on whether we should require universal background checks for anyone who wants to buy a gun so that criminals or people with severe mental illnesses can't get their hands on one. 
They'll vote on tough new penalties for anyone who buys guns only to turn around and sell them to criminals. They'll vote on a measure that would keep weapons of war and high capacity ammunition magazines that facilitate these mass killings off our streets. This is what Obama had to say a couple weeks ago as he tries to renew his push for stricter gun control laws such as required background checks and lower magazine clips and guns. Right now about 90% of Americans agree with this proposal and are, and are anticipating that Congress will pass it when they meet in the next coming weeks. I believe that you should have stricter background checks. People have been using guns for years. They have been using them for mainly hunting. Rifles and everything, okay. They should also start getting rid of long magazines as well. Just have night, regular seven rounds. Guns are also made to protect people. If someone breaks into your house, I believe, my personal opinion, if that person's gonna threaten you, you know, you should be able to defend yourself. There are still people like this parent that lost a child from the Sandy Hook shooting who want a complete ban on all assault rifles. I just hope some good can come out of this and, and changes for mental health, the ban of assault weapons. Or, there's, uh, I, I, I just can't fathom why any of us need that in, in our society or in our home. But not everyone thinks that is enough. Some people want assault rifles or any military-grade weapon banned from all citizens, but that seems unlikely to happen as the National Rifle Association says you cannot always tell the difference between an assault weapon and a gun you would use for sports or hunting. You cannot define what the firearm is that they want to ban. Now, if you look at the legislation, the most popular turkey hunting shotguns. I was going to ask that question. The most p t popular turkey hunting shotguns in the U.S. all look like this, yep. camouflage, and have a pistol grip. This will be banned. That's what's going on with gun control laws. We'll be sure in the next coming weeks or sooner to watch what Congress does with President Obama's proposal and anything else they might do regarding assault rifles in general. Reporting for NCC News, Stephen Gagliardo. Justin Bieber has made a big appearance, but not on the marquee, but rather in a police report. And a legendary singer is singing the Taxman Blues. Carl Azuis has all your entertainment headlines in today's Hollywood Minute. Justin Bieber could end up in trouble with the law. Los Angeles Sheriff's deputies were called to his gated community Tuesday morning after reports of some type of confrontation between Bieber and his neighbor. A police spokesperson says the unidentified fellow resident accused Bieber of, quote, battery and threats. An investigation is ongoing with charges against the singer a possibility. One of America's favorite reality TV families could be expanding. Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar tell People Magazine they're considering adoption. The stars of TLC's 19 Kids and Counting, seen here, have 19 children, two grandchildren, and a third on the way. Michelle Duggar says the younger children are pushing their parents to bring another baby into the family. Whether they adopt or have another biological child, the Duggar parents say they will approach any changes with an open heart. Dionne Warwick is down to her last thousand dollars. The singer filed for bankruptcy last week, saying she owes more than ten million dollars in taxes dating back to the early 1990s. She listed her monthly income as less than twenty-one thousand dollars and almost as much in expenses, although she is eligible for a pension. The singer's publicist admits past financial mismanagement, but says her current problems are more from penalties that accumulated while tax authorities refused her settlement proposals. For Hollywood Minute, I'm Carl Azus. Please join us next time for more NCC News. I'm Elena Rasnak. And I'm Michael Long. Thank you for joining us and good night. Coming up on the next NCC News. Police are investigating a car crash in Las Vegas that led to very expensive repairs. Also, China has created a new cell phone that is creating a lot of buzz. Please join us again.